glad you are here. We're going to give you a chance to participate in a minute, too, so you won't have to just sit there doing nothing. <laughs> One of the most important things we have to decide after church today, do we, where are we going to lunch? <laughs> if you're married, you've got to, got to agree with that. Where are we going to lunch? And when she says, it doesn't matter, you know that means nothing. That <laughs> And even if you decide Mexican, you've got to agree on which one to go. But we've got something a whole lot bigger to agree on than where we're going to lunch. I want us to talk today about agreeing in prayer. We don't know what's happening in 2021 the more we knew what was going to happen in 2020. So one of the things we need to know is, hey, we're just walking with God the whole way depending on Him in prayer. So let's read a couple of verses about agreeing in prayer. This is from what Jesus said we call the Lord's Prayer. Pray like this, Jesus said, Our Father in heaven. Now, why did I mention that? Our. See the plural? He's talking about, and there's nothing wrong with you praying the Lord's Prayer by yourself. But our Father, give us this day of bread. Lead us not to temptation. Deliver us from the evil one. We pray together. There's times we need to be praying together. Let's look at another verse. How wonderful and pleasant it is when brothers, and that includes your sister too, all of us live together in harmony. And what one thing we can really be in harmony on that will bring us in harmony is praying together. All right, then it talks about the early church in Acts 1. They were all, they all met together and were constantly united in prayer. There in the church, you remember the power of God that they had on them. They were constantly united in prayer. One more, and this is where I get the term agreeing in prayer. I also tell you this, Jesus said, if two of you agree here on earth, agree here on earth concerning anything you ask, my Father in heaven will do it for you. Agreeing together in prayer. There is power in us agreeing in anything and having harmony and unity on agreeing on what we believe is important, including agreeing together in prayer. We want to see our prayers answered. So, here's the things I want us to agree on in prayer. Number one. Oh, yes, I forgot to mention this. The word agree is from the Greek word for symphony. This is our symphony in Nashville. And uh, they can't all be playing different songs. What a mess that would be. they got to be united in how they play together. And that's what he says about agreeing together. We all have different gifts and abilities and even ways we pray, but we're coming together. And it'll be a symphony when we agree in prayer. All right, first let's agree that we need God. We need God. Now I'm going to tell you this verse. Uh, I'll, t I'll read it first, and then I'll tell you the importance in my life. Each time he said, now Paul is talking here how he came to the Lord with a, a thorn in his flesh, he called it. And each time he'd go to God, my grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. Boy, we're glad to hear that. So now I am glad to boast about my weaknesses so that the power of Christ can work through me. He goes on. That's why I take pleasure in my weaknesses and in the insults, hardship, persecutions, and the troubles that I suffer for Christ. For when I am weak, then I am strong. And I've told you this before, so I'll tell you quickly. When I was in college, Christian college, in Nashville, I felt the Lord was calling me to preach. And I talked to God and said, no, wait a minute. Remember, I don't do well getting in front of people. I'm terrified and scared, and I'm not a good communicator, and I, I can't do that, Lord. And I said, if you're gonna, you've got to give me something. And I opened, the, I opened the Bible, and I pointed to verse, and it was this. Which I believe was an answer to prayer. My grace is made perfect in weakness, Richard. So if you're weak, pray. <laughs> my weakness is made is better when I'm or I'm strong with my weakness. And so this is for all of us. We all need God, not just to preach, not just to do some particular ministry, but in our life to be the right kind of Christian person, husband, a wife, and whatever that we need to be. We need God. So I'm going to ask you. This is the participation. The word amen means so be it or I agree. Do you agree that we need God? Amen. amen. Yes. We need God. Well, we're agreeing that. Good. Number two, let's agree that prayer is important. All through the Bible. Matter of fact, uh, I didn't put 
a, a verse for this because it's filled with verses about prayer. And so I put throughout the Bible, in the Old Testament, in the New Testament, in history, people of God have depended and on God through prayer. They saw the need of prayer. Even Jesus prayed. And how can he work? And we say, we don't need to pray. We need Jesus to pray. What kind of arrogance is that? And yet, how many Christians do I talk to and say, have you been praying like that? Well, I don't really pray. Man, and, and, and some of you can't even come because of COVID. Certainly, you know what the good news is? You can still talk to God. We need prayer. And I hope we all agree that prayer is important in our lives to be able to have that relationship with God and depend on Him and see Him answer our prayer. We need prayer. So do you agree with me? Prayer is important. Amen. amen. Yeah. Prayer is important. Now you know when you're saying amen here, that's sort of tying you up. Now you're saying, oh, no, 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 no. All right. Let's agree that prayer can change things. That actually things happen. God does stuff because we pray. Wow. That's big time. That prayer changes things. There was a missionary to China by the name of Jonathan Goforth. Now you got to be a missionary to name Goforth. <laughs> Jonathan Goforth. You know. So he's trying to learn Chinese and not doing very well. He go months and months. He studied, and the Chinese people said, "We can't understand you." And he's praying, "God, give me some. I don't know what to do." When all of a sudden, one when he starts to preach, and all of a sudden, all of these thoughts and words came to his head, and he preached, and the people understood him. He found out later on that that same day, there was a Christian college where a group of students were praying for him to learn Chinese, and they said, "We prayed that day, and we knew something happened that day." And didn't find out till later when the correspondence that something did happen. He preached. Fluently in Chinese the rest of his life. I say prayer changes things. That prayer can change things in your marriage, in your home, in your work situation, in your growth as a Christian. Prayer can change things. I know God doesn't always answer it like we figure he should, but he's always answering it. And as I said before, uh, with God things are happening even when nothing's happening. Even when we don't see something happening, God is doing something. And so do you agree with me that prayer changes things? Amen. Amen. And we can all give answers in our lives. The earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful results, the Bible says. All right, let's agree. I already said yes, with God, some things happen when nothing's happening. Well, let's agree to let God use us to see prayers answered. In other words, we know that we don't... We, we don't just ask God, would you hand me a glass of water? We can do things. We may pray that God will supply my needs, but that doesn't mean he cooks supper. You know, we still, God uses us, and that's one of the best things that happen in our life. That when we're praying for something to happen, God help us to be an answer to that prayer, somebody else's prayer. You probably, you believe, I believe anyhow, that there's people who live in other parts of the country who are praying for somebody they love here in the Nashville area. That some Christian will help them or speak to them and pray for them or invite them to church or whatever. And we can be an answer to that prayer because I know I've got relatives in another place I've prayed for. We can be used of God to be our answer to prayer or somebody else's answer to prayer. Let me read this verse. Even if some refuse to obey the good news, the gospel, your godly lives will speak to them without any words. That doesn't mean don't use words, but it means... You got to do what you can by your life, and then he goes on. By the way, that was a word to a wife who was out uh, with a husband who was not saved, and that. But it applies to everybody. And then he said to some husbands, "They will be uh, your. Uh, they will be. Well, no, I'm not you. They will be one hope like serving your reverend wives." All right, let's go to the next part. Treat her as you should, so your prayers will not be hindered. He's talking about a husband to wife. You're praying for a good marriage and you're mistreating your wife. Your prayers are hindered by your own actions. So you treat her the way you should. Your prayers won't be hindered. And so how we live affects whether our prayers get answered. And uh, we can be used of God to see those prayers about our lives. I had a friend, uh, Tryman Messer, 
was up preaching for us in Delaware one time. We had a young lady who came with a friend, got saved in our church, and was going just a few weeks or months, I think, when Tryman came. She said, I want to speak. She said, I would like to speak to that speaker and you after church. I said, okay. So we went back to the office, and she said, my husband gives me such a hard time about church. Every time I go on a Sunday morning, he yells at me and gives me a hard time. What are you doing over there? And I would not, I'm inviting him, he won't come. What can I do to get him to church, to get him to be saved like I was? And so Triman proceeds to tell her basically what that verse said. Well, you live the right kind of life in front of your husband. When you get home and he starts yelling, you just be as nice as you can. Don't yell back. Fix him a good lunch and smile and let your good life be an encouragement and a witness to him. If he starts cussing you out, don't cuss him back. And just be as sweet and kind and smile and nice as you can. And she said, well, I ain't doing that. <laughs> and she got up and left. <laughs> well, you know, sometimes that is a little hard. They get smart up. You want to get smart up with them. You ain't talking to me like that. But the Bible says that our life can be a witness. And that's certainly true. So let's agree that we want to live the kind of lives that can be used of God to be an answer to prayer. Do you agree with that? Say amen. 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 I get getting less amens on every one. <laughs> because I know what you're trying to do, preach. You're trying to say, i got to live like that. Well, all right, let's agree to persevere in prayer. Quick, short verse on that. Never stop praying. Never stop praying. Now, that doesn't mean you 24 hours a day you're praying. It means you pray the next day and the next day. And sometimes you feel like I've prayed for that three or four times for that person, for that marriage, or what, and nothing's happened. What's the use? No, you don't quit praying. We persevere. Or things go so well, we quit praying. Hey, if I need God, I'll call back on right now. We'll be pretty good. You know, don't quit praying. Matter of fact, you can pray in the morning, and later on in the day, somebody has a need, you can pray again. In the afternoon, you can pray again. And at night, you can pray again. But don't quit praying. We need to persevere in prayer. Sometimes as we persevere in prayer, we find out that thing we're praying for, we don't really need. Maybe you're praying for a mercy of these bins. I don't really need a mercy of these bins. I need a roll of thrones. <laughs> But you persevere and you find out. And so it's good to sometimes not get it the first time. But we persevere. That clarifies our motives. We have a relationship with God. And that's what the Bible tells us to do. To just persevere in prayer. So how many of us agree? Let's persevere in prayer. Amen. Amen. Alright. Let's agree to pray for these desires. Now I didn't use the word requests. Or needs. I purposely used the word desires. You see, the word desire is a little bit stronger, isn't it, somehow? That's my desire. Usually it's in something else to hope to not prayer. You know, my desire. But I think this is what we need. We need to have some things that are really on our hearts that we really desire. God, this is what we want, we need. Help us. Let's agree that we need to pray for salvation. For people to be saved. My prayer to God, my heart's desire, prayer to God for Israel. They might be saved, Paul says, to pray. For people to be saved. Now here's what we believe. We either believe that it doesn't matter anybody saved. Or there is nobody saved because there is no such thing as life after death. Or that it matters how what people choose. That God gives us a free choice to choose Him and salvation and heaven. Or to not choose that. That we can either choose as and receive Christ and go to heaven or not and go to hell. And that everybody you know, all your family, and all your friends, and all your neighbors, and all you people you work with, is one or the other. Now, we either believe that, or believe it just doesn't matter. And if it does matter, that ought to be one of our most serious prayers. For my children, my greatest desire is that all my children serve God go to heaven. For my sisters and brothers, for my grandchildren. For your parents, if they're still alive. For your friends. Our greatest desire, our desire, our desire is that they choose God and go to heaven. 
How can we not have somebody on our prayer list for them to be saved? And if you're listening to this this morning and you're not saved, the good news is you can be saved. You can have forgiveness. You can have a relationship with God. Just choose to say yes. For God so loved the world, he gave his son. Who, whoever believes. And you can pray a simple prayer like, God, I know I have done wrong and I've left you out of my life. Forgive me. I choose Jesus. I choose salvation. I want to be saved. I want to serve you. I want to go to heaven. Please, I do that now. You can do that. And we know that. And we want to pray and be used of God for people to be saved, to be disciples of Jesus Christ. Because we're thankful that we were. I still remember the change in my life. I had no idea what it was going to be when I got saved at age 14. But thankfully, I did it. And we ought to be praying. I hope we agree together that we want to see people saved. And we want to see Christians grow. We know that it's, you know, when you first become Christian or young Christians, and some of them, we even have some people that, that got saved in our church and then COVID came and haven't been able to come back. We need to be praying for them. Pray for them to be strong, to find a way to learn and, and get communicated. And again, we can be an answer to that in our own prayer by helping talk, calling and talking and meeting with them. We want to pray for the growth of Christians all over, all of us. So, I've got a space on the bulletin, I think from Tim Numbers. And here's what I'm going to ask you to do. Write down, as we think of some of these things, write down a name. You don't have to turn it into me, it'll be for you later on, or two. Oh yeah, I'm thinking right now, somebody needs to be saved. You write that down. I'm thinking right now, a Christian, I want to pray for their growth. Write that down. All right, what's another, de another desire? That the new touch from God for all of us in 2021, that God, I will not just be lazy and so-so and humdrum in my Christian life. As Jesus said, I don't want you to worry, this is lukewarm kind of thing. We don't want to be that. I hope we don't. We don't want to be. This is the most important thing that's going on in the universe today is serving God. Just like Christ being born on Christmas was the most important thing people didn't realize it. And we don't need to be humdrum, lackadaisical about serving God. God give us a new touch right now in serving you. Our next desire, our relationships. And not just our relationship, but maybe you know somebody who's having a tough time in their marriage right now. And who does it sometimes? A tough time in their marriage. Because you got two different human beings who both have their own self-will and their own pride. And, uh, like, let's put somebody down. Maybe you know God pray. I pray for their marriage to go well. For them to learn the ways to deal with each other and love each other. To work it out. Or maybe some parent you know with their child relationship is not good. And you want to pray for them. But relationships because they're being human beings sometimes are tough. And maybe there's somebody you can jot right down right now. You think about, oh, I want to pray about their, their marriage, their, their relationship with a child, their friendship. What's another desire? The needs of family and friends. Wow, probably all of us know by now somebody's dealing with COVID. I do. found out another preacher friend of mine and his wife who had COVID. Just found out. Or somebody whose family, who somebody died of COVID. Let's pray for them. But there's other needs they have. Maybe financial or physical and need a job. I know some people need a job because of COVID. Let's pray for some people that have their needs. I say, well, I got one. I don't need to pray. But maybe somebody else needs your prayer for something in their life. And so there's somebody you can jot down right now, a family member, a friend or two, who's got a need, a physical need, a financial need, something else and you can pray for. Workers. Now, here's two that we need to pray for more workers. And the workers are already working. Let's pray for Sandy leading music every Sunday morning. She's always, I don't know what to sleep. I don't know what to sleep. You know, but this is not her, what she really is her uh, great desire in life, but she's doing it and doing, I think, a good job. Amen. Okay. I've given you a chance. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> but let's pray for her. Pray for our AV team. And, Pray for our Roar Harris Ministries. Great job they're doing in East Africa. And hopefully it's going to open up again this year. 
Let's remember to pray for them. And, uh, and, and my niece that we support in, in uh, Spain, Brooke, they've had a tough time because they've been shut down so much in Spain trying to minister. But there's somebody, some workers somewhere that are, oh, I wish somebody would pray for me. And we need more workers. And our leaders, we're told to pray for our leaders in our government and authority. Now, we get a lot of joking about the knuckleheads in Washington, but, and, and I probably do that myself, but how about let's pray for them sometimes. Whether or not they're Christians, let's pray that God would intervene and work and give them wisdom and do the right thing. And our local and state leaders, and our, and our uh, denominational leaders, and, and medical leaders, and all this stuff. Pray for God to give them wisdom, and maybe you can write down somebody you didn't even vote for. Wouldn't that be good? <laughs> pray for them. Let's pray for a spiritual awakening in America. I know you know, or I think you know, that church attendance was already going down before COVID, and it's now really went down. And, and we need a spiritual awakening in America, I'm convinced. The people, and I don't know why, with all of this, with people, everybody's probably got somebody to know who's died now. Why are we not waking? Mm -hmm. And seeing that there is an eternity and there is a God and there's a purpose in life and it's not just making uh, uh, 40 hours in a weekend. It's something real. And let's have a spiritual, let's pray for a spiritual awakening in America. Amen. Will you say amen to all those desires? Amen. amen. We need to see these happen. Let's pray. And I believe in that we all believe. We said we agree in the power of prayer. And we want to pray. And just one more I want to mention. Let's agree that the time for these blessings is now. And the verse says, Indeed, the right time is now. Today is the day of salvation. And we're not talking about, yeah, when, so when I get time later on in the year, or when I retire, or when things slow down at work, I'm going to be a praying machine. We're talking about now is the time for people to be saved. Now is the time for Christians to grow. Now is the time for prayer for our leaders and our workers and for, for uh, the people who are sort of once walked with God and they're sort of backed off. But now is the time. For God's blessings and for us to pray. Who would agree with that? Say amen. 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 I think we all agree on this really already. And let's, let's just remember it again. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to take your list. And, and more you can add to it later on. And I want you to pray with somebody this week. Could be a husband and wife. Could be a couple of you get together and go to lunch and then have prayer. Could be a couple of you get together and only meet lunch and have prayer. Maybe somebody you call say, I want to pray with you. Let's pray over the phone. Or let's do Zoom and let's pray together. But we talked about agreeing in prayer. And that's my emphasis today. It's not just praying. It's us agreeing in prayer. We're two or three. Let's gather together somehow as married couples, as families, as groups of Christians. And it could be other friends at work. At the lunch break at work. And we're going to pray. I'm asking you to pray with another group of people or another person at least once a week this month. Let's start this year right by agreeing in prayer. I want us to do that. Now, I want us to uh, sing a song and then we're going to pray. Lord, I need you. That's what we're agreeing on when we say, Lord, I need you. I'm going to ask my wife to come here and take my hand. I want you, if you're married, you can take each other's hand. If you're sitting next to somebody and you don't want to take their hand, you can just be close to them. I want us to pray together right now and agree together in prayer. You can, as I pray, you can agree with my prayer. You can pray your own prayer. God hears you. But I want us to pray together right now and agree together 